This video is about x-ray beam divergence and penumbra. This has great tips for everyday positioning, as well as a little bit of CQR and registry review. So when I'm talking about something being divergent, I'm not talking about Theo James, unless you want to. What I'm talking about is the x-ray beam itself and how the x-rays are behaving in relation to the patient. So in this homemade drawing I made on PowerPoint, we're looking down from the top. And this is our patient standing at the wall, Bucky, and the x-ray beam is coming out from the x-ray tube. And right in the middle of the x-ray beam, those x-rays are pretty much perpendicular to the patient. They're coming out in a straight line. But over here towards the edges, our x-ray beam is going to fan out a little bit, so it's not in a straight line. And this can impact your image, maybe more than you might think. You may have had this happen. Maybe you're working with another technologist and you have your patient in a lateral chest x-ray position and it is a true lateral. And the person you're working with comes in and they tweak it. They rotate them ever so slightly forward and the result is a beautiful image. Why did they do that? It's all about beam divergence. Let me show you with my plastic skeleton, Lucy. So this is one of my favorite things to do with students because it is pretty fun. Here is my plastic skeleton right in the middle of my x-ray beam. Now, this wouldn't be how you would position for a real chest. And by the way, a plastic skeleton on wheels is very difficult to position. But what this is going to show is what the posterior portion of her chest, the part we're gonna check for rotation, will look like if it's right in the middle of the image. In real life, this would cut off the anterior portion of the chest, but let's see what it looks like. So it's not too bad. Uh, it's not a diagnostic image if this was real life, but you can see that some of the ribs on my plastic skeleton are starting to superimpose. Now what's going to happen if I move her directly back so that her spine is no longer in the center of the um, x-ray beam, but it's in the kind of fanned portion where the beam is diverging. So this is her position. Let's look what happens to the posterior portion of her ribs. Very rotated. I didn't rotate her forward or backward for this image. This is simply me just scooting her back and see how much of an effect that had on our image. That is why uh, sometimes you'll work with an old school technologist and they'll just slightly tweak that patient by rotating them, moving their right shoulder um, forward just a little bit. So that went kind of fast. Let's look at the images compared to each other again. Here is our patient right in the middle. And here is our plastic patient with them scooted back. You see how much that rotated the patient without me rotating them? Again, right in the middle and scooted back. That is all from beam divergence. So sometimes when you're positioning your patient, you do have to take that into account in real life scenarios. So that may differ a little bit from what you take your registry or your CQR on, on rotating the patient forward, but that is a real life tick, tip or trick to really help you get that perfect lateral chest x-ray. Now there again is our patient right in the middle of the image, but this next image was me rotating her forward slightly. So it did fix it, and again, she is on wheels, so that's pretty difficult to do, but it's a really great visual of what beam divergence is and how it does affect us in everyday life. Now let's talk a little bit about penumbra. Penumbra is a term that you may hear more frequently at your clinical site because it's a bit more of an old school term, but the same interchangeable terms are geometric unsharpness or focal spot blur. So focal spot blur is probably the one that you're going to hear on your registry or CQR exam. Now when we're talking about this, we're really talking about that area that is unsharp. It's kind of gray, it's fuzzy, it's just not a sharp image. 
And when it comes to your exams, you're going to want to know this formula or the variation of this formula so that you can figure out focal spot blur on your test. And that is just a simple memorization trick and plugging in the numbers with the problem. But you'll notice from these equations that you do have SOD, to, which is source to object distance, and OID, object to image distance. So those are really going to affect the focal spot. And that can be a little difficult um, to really get when you're looking at a actual equation. So let's try to demonstrate how that happens in real life. And then it'll make the math problems just a little bit easier to understand. Let's go back to my aerial chest x-ray uh, illustration where we're looking at focal spot blur. So the part that's going to represent the focal spot blur is this right here. Now this really relates to our object to image distance. So here I don't have a ton of OID and my focal spot is, or my focal spot blur is pretty small relatively speaking. But what happens when I move my patient closer to the source? This will happen. So now I have a really increased OID, and I now, of course, have a very large area of focal spot blur. This is why we, in real life, like to put our patient as close to the image receptor as possible. Decreasing that OID will make sure that we also decrease that focal spot blur. Now that's not the only thing that can affect this. We also could have a very short SID and that would also give us a pretty intense focal spot blur. So that's why one of the many reasons we have a standard for our SIDs. So if we went any shorter than 40 inches from the image receptor, that could really negatively impact our image and have a blur around it. So that's just been a quick review of beam divergence and our penumbra or our focal spot blur. So those will help you in real life practical situations. Remember that rotating the chest x-ray, the lateral chest forward just a smidge, that's just a real life tip. That's not for your registry, but that math formula will help you with both CQR and registry exams.